Hello everybody, welcome to Susan's Craft Cabin. Today I'd like to show you how to make a pleated lampshade in the easiest way I know. The method I use is by pleating the fabric before you actually attach it to the frame. The traditional way is to bind the frame and then to pleat the fabric onto the frame as you go around. But this way is a much simpler way, you get your pleats in the right place and it doesn't take as much time or effort. I'll put a list of everything you need up at the end of this video. So if you'd like to gather your things together, let's get started. So this is a lampshade I bought in a charity shop, it cost me I think £1.50. It does need repairing, the inside is completely wrecked with um, lining coming away as you can see but it didn't cost very much money so we're going to restore it today and we're going to use sort of pleated gathered look. The first thing we have to do is to remove the lining and then the outer fabric. So I started to cut the fabric around the bottom. This is a mass manufactured lampshade and all of this here has just been glued on with super glue. So we have to make sure that we remove everything before we start. In order to find out the amount of fabric you're going to need to make this pleated shade, you measure around the circumference at the bottom and you double it. And that will give you the length of fabric that you need. And then you will need to measure the length from the top to the bottom allowing an inch at the bottom and an inch at the top to give you the measurements of fabric that you need. You may have to cut two pieces and join them together unless you have particularly wide fabric. So now I've started, I've got my fabric and I've started to pleat. It depends on how particular you are about your pleats but I like to start with folding over an inch and a half at the end here and then the first pleat is going to measure three quarters of an inch and then the next bit is going to be three quarters of an inch and then the next piece is going to be three quarters of an inch just do the top to start with and keep pleating pin as you go along You can make these as wide or as narrow as you want, depending on your preference. You keep going, pin them down, just at the top edge to start with. The only thing is to try and get the gathers at the top a similar inch. So if you want half inch pleats, that's fine. If you want one inch pleats, that's fine. But try and keep them pretty much the same. You can get very mathematical about this, but I'm not that sort of person. I like to just do things by eye. You'll notice that here I've had to join two pieces of fabric together. But that's okay because that will be covered up. And what I suggest you do when you've come part way along like that is to take a hot iron and press them down into place. If 
fabric's now been pleated and each time I've pleated and pinned, I press with the hot iron to give it that nice crisp edge. Having pleated the top and pressed it down, I've given a running stitch to hold in the pleats and now I'm going to sew those on the sewing machine to keep them in place. So now I have bound the top of the frame and I'm going to do the same with the bottom. I'm, this time I'm just using special cotton bias um, tape which is nice and strong and white. So I've shown you how to do this before my previous videos. We bind by turning and pulling, keeping it taut because you want a good base on which to sew the fabric. When we come to a strut, we go under and over and up again, like a figure of eight, in order to give that security. So we'll just continue binding this frame and then the next thing we're going to do is attach the fabric. This is a much simpler way of making a pleated lampshade because most lampshades that are pleated are pleated on the frame itself. This time we've pleated the fabric before we attach it to the frame. So now I've got my frame that's, that's all ready. So now I'm going to attach the fabric that I've pleated and sewn to the frame itself. And we're going to do this in a slightly different way to the way we do the other Victorian lampshades where we would do the top and then the bottom. This time we're just going to do the top and the bottom at the same time. So this is a different way we catch the pin at the top and pin the pleat at the bottom. Pin the pleat at the top, pin the pleat at the bottom, pulling taut. Pin the pleat at the top, pin the pleat at the bottom. You can probably do a couple at a time and then pull them into place at the bottom. And continue that process all the way around. I very quickly pinned all the way around the top and around the bottom, pulling in the pleats as best I can. And the next thing to do is to attach this to the frame. You can see inside there. And the way we're going to do that is to use some very strong thread and of course a needle and attach. It takes a bit of time and a bit of patience, but this really is the simplest way of making a pleated lampshade that I have found. So the next thing to do is to actually stitch around the top, pulling in the pleats. And also, once you've done that, around the bottom. It's important to catch in the pleats, so easy not to catch in the binding at the same time. But once you have the pleats at the top in position, then it's easier to sew the bottom and get the pleats in the right place. As I said before, you can be very mathematical about this, but I think when you're making something really creative, it's not necessary. I'm having to push that through. A thimble is a good idea, because it's very difficult to catch in all the layers. I want to show you that you must keep, when you're sewing along the bottom, you must pull the fabric up really tightly to make sure you get a really good firm edge there and then catch in catch in each pleat 
you have to use fairly small stitches for this. tight. This is why we use very strong thread. You can use upholstery thread or just nylon thread as long as it's strong enough to be able to give a good pull. The pleats along the bottom will be wider than the ones along the top because of course you have to pull the fabric out like a fan, but that's part of the beauty of these lampshades. So I've now trimmed off the edges, all the excess fabric from the top, as you can see, and from the bottom. Now using the glue gun, I'm going to attach braid around the top and the bottom just to neaten everything off. So I start by attaching some braid to the very top to cover the raw edges and I'm just going to use some of this glue. Pushing it down firmly, catching in all the raw edges, like so. The only time I use glue in the lampshades is for the trims. When I first learned how to make these over 40 years ago, you couldn't use glue because there wasn't any that was suitable. And they certainly didn't have glue guns. These are a wonderful invention. And everything had to be stitched by hand, which you can imagine took a very, very long time. But there's nothing wrong with using modern methods to make life easier for yourself. but the fundamental part of the lampshade is in a traditional lampshade should always be hand sewn or, um, onto the frame. Right. So now I've covered the raw edges. I could also put some more inside if I wanted to, just to neaten it off even more. But for the purposes of this video, we're just going to decorate on the external. So now I'm going to attach turquoise around the top. So the lampshade is now finished. I've actually put braid around the bottom. I put a piece of braid on the inside to cover the raw seam and I've braided the top and all the way around and it looks quite stunning. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll make one of these lampshades. They're not difficult to make. They're just a bit time consuming, but what a beautiful effect you get at the end. If you'd like to subscribe, I'd really appreciate that. And if you have any questions, please just message me and I promise I'll answer. So thank you very much and I'll see you next time.